Uh, there's another question from Michelle Beardsley on LinkedIn. Every time I have new members in my classes for you Mac people, I always have one or two complain that they feel so much pressure in their necks while doing Pilates. I try to explain to them that they have to focus in more, focus in more of their core and not let their neck muscles hold weight. How do you explain to class participants to take the pressure off their necks and concentrate it more in their core? Great question. This is so, so common. In fact, uh, I, I've had uh, chiropractors and osteopaths say to me, you've got to stop this Pilates. I'm getting so many people coming in with tight necks, neck, 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 neck. And then I hear Pilates teachers saying, we're never doing the 100 again. We're taking exercise like the 100 out of the repertoire. We're taking exercise like the double leg stretch out of the repertoire. Why are you taking it out of the repertoire? Because they're bad exercises. People are getting neck tension. No, my friends, they're not bad exercises. They're wonderful exercises. They may, be not, they may not be done well. People may be not doing them well, but they are good exercises. Or people may not be ready for them. That's also a possibility. It is all about body placement and not necessarily about strength. I've seen people with abs like six packs, eight packs, 12 packs doesn't matter. They still get neck tension because they are not in good placement. So, if you lift up and you stop there, for whatever reason it may be, typically it's not strength. Typically it's either tightness or not having the body awareness to come higher. Seldom is it strength. But in my book, I draw a shadow around this area on the ground. It's as if the sun is shining down on me and there's a shadow around this area. If your head falls outside of that shadow, you're going to get neck tension. It doesn't matter who you are. You're going to get neck tension. You have to to be able to come high enough. And the head must sit in this region here. The moment the head goes back, you're going to start getting neck tension. And the head is very heavy. The head is heavy, and it's falling back. You're going to get neck tension. That is why we have to, yes, we have to have adequate strength in the abdominals to lift high enough. But it's more to do with flexibility and more to do with body awareness. That you have to find ways of getting a person high enough. It may be saying, you know what? I want you to use the spring. You see where you are now? Now relax those back muscles of yours and lift a little higher. Also elongate the back muscles, not necessarily relax them all, but elongate. Because actually the deep back muscles are still working at this point. The deep posterior extensors. And then slowly down. And really trying to get the person to reach this height. Because if they're here, that's neck tension. So that's a very important point. That there's certain positions that if you don't lift high enough, when you go back, if you resist, and don't allow the spine to go back all the way, you'll get neck tension. You need a certain criteria, but it's usually happening during abdominal work. Uh, Michelle, it usually happens during abdominal work. Try get the people to come higher up, trying to uh, elongate those muscles of the back, engage more abdominal, yes, but show people People often don't realize how high they have to come. And another thing, put the focus here and not the focus here. People try and lift with their necks. They try and lift with their head. Same with side exercises. How often do we do a side exercise and someone's trying to lift with the neck? No, put the focus here. <laughs>